Hey, what's going on guys? Some potentially good news for Bitcoin. Mt. Gox hits pause on 2.8 billion in distributions from Mt. Gox. Instead of happening right now-ish, they're gonna be postponing it until October, 2025. This is potentially uh, bullish for Bitcoin because that, that Bitcoin likely won't get dumped on the market. Not that it was necessarily gonna get dumped on the market anyways, but it at least creates a little bit of stability because if people thought that this was going to be getting distributed, they might try to get ahead of it and they might try to sell their Bitcoin. Then these Mt. Gox payments come out and then they try to sell it as well, which just wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. So it is delayed. Although you could also say that this is a little bit bearish for the altcoins because if they were to take this Bitcoin and let's say now it's worth more than it was when they first had it, they could dump this and then go into the altcoins and it could potentially start the altcoin season. If you look at the CBBI historical chart here, we are at a score of 62 currently. And whenever it gets up here in these 80s and 90s, you know, it starts to look like we might be at a blow off top and it might be time to sell. Right now, it looks like we are still. This is this is still Bitcoin season, without a doubt, it seems. If you look at Bitcoin dominance as well, back in 2017, I mean, this is before you had all these different altcoins, or maybe there weren't a lot of exchanges. I think Coinbase was around, but maybe not of other, a lot of other stuff. And dominance obviously tanked leading into that bull season at the end of 2017. Then we had Bitcoin dominance reach about 70%. As everyone started to flow into the altcoins in 2021. And right now, we're only at about 58% in Bitcoin dominance. So I'd expect we're right here at the low end of, I guess, this range. So, how much longer, how much higher is Bitcoin dominance going to go before we potentially see a shift over into the altcoins? They're just now starting to cut rates, they're just now starting to print money. Uh, they need to prevent a recession. It looks like we're potentially heading for that too. So with the money printer getting turned on, but everything is at all-time high already is what makes it seem kind of alarming. You would think that they would be due for a correction, but we might be just in completely uncharted territory. This is the NASDAQ 100. If I was to do the S&P 500 futures, right? Just look at this, right? But if you factor in the amount of money that we're printing, Maybe it makes sense that there wouldn't be a major pullback because there's just that much propping it up, right? This is just one massive bubble. Are we at that stage where we've hit the last bubble before we actually collapse the entire currency? I'm not entirely sure, right? But they're definitely going to be printing money, which should get absorbed by Bitcoin and then trickle down into the higher risk stuff, like a lot of the altcoins. So we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, in terms of number go up, if that's what you're worried about with Bitcoin, that's all you're worried about. You don't care about using it as freedom money or anything like that. Michael Saylor says the end goal for MicroStrategy is to be a top Bitcoin bank where he borrows fiat to buy more Bitcoin. Obviously, that is just going to condense the ownership of Bitcoin into MicroStrategy. And also, you don't want to be putting your Bitcoin with the, you don't want to be giving up custody, right? Not your keys, not your crypto. So the last thing you want to do is be giving your Bitcoin to something like MicroStrategy. If you can avoid it, there's going to be some people that don't want to learn how to self-custody, don't want the responsibility. And maybe these ETFs and custodial services make sense. But I think that there's a big risk for that because the authorities, the governments, right? They hate Bitcoin. They're tolerating it right now with these ETFs and whatever, but uh, they it is not good, right, for big government. They do not like a currency they can't control because they're using the dollar across the world, you know, as a bit of a, it's, as some people say, it's been weaponized, right? You had sanctions on different countries, all this sort of stuff. But anyways, this, this I suppose is bullish because it just means MicroStrategy is going to continue borrowing fiat and buying Bitcoin. So that should put positive price, you know, demand on the price. So we'll see. We'll have to see what happens with that. 
And if you are a Bitcoin maxi, you love this news. Unichain is another confirmation of Ethereum being a bearish asset in 2024. This from Magal. This is an awesome post here. So if you didn't catch the news, Uniswap is launching its own layer two called Unichain. It used to be just on the Ethereum mainnet, and it was generating a lot of ETH fees in terms of gas and MEV for the Ethereum mainnet, which is all going to go away. Now, if you look at the four areas where Uniswap makes money, let me expand this. Swap fees to liquidity providers. This is like slip, right? Front end fees, uh, like what they charge for using their front end, right? They've got a fee for that. Then you've got transaction gas fees, which currently were going to Ethereum mainnet to be burned, which was good for the Ethereum asset, create, creating a little bit of scarcity. There's this ultrasound money around Ethereum, even though the inflation has only gone up since Den soon, the Den Kun upgrade, whatever that is. And then MEV, which again was previously going to the validators on the mainnet, but Uniswap this unit chain, to my understanding, is going to be able to capture all that themselves. So then what money is going to be going to Ethereum mainnet? Uniswap is like the biggest, obviously, uh, place for transaction fees over on Ethereum. So the rep the the impact of this can is going to be really interesting to see. Dio Brands did make a comment here, though. He said the whole OP stack and multi-chain thesis is extremely bullish for ETH as a settlement network and ETH as an asset, since everything ultimately needs to settle back to ETH and ETH is used as the gas asset for settling back to ETH. But then, so you might think that all these L2s getting built, it's bullish for ETH because that just means more settlements are going to have to happen, which is good for Ethereum and gas. That's assuming though that the vault that Ethereum does actually end up having the whole world built on it, which I just do not think is going to happen. I think people are tribal. Uh, there's different tech, different solutions. I don't think ETH is going to absorb uh, the whole world. But Magal points this out. If you look at Optimism, Optimism earned $600,000 in revenue in the last 30 days, only 15,000 of which went back to the validators, uh, went back to Ethereum. Fifteen. That's a massive profit margin. And if you, you know, figure that Uniswap was probably something similar to that, think of all the revenue that Ethereum is going to be losing on from this move. So I don't see this as bullish. There's too many other chains like Solana, and then you've got uh, eGold, right? Multiverse X, Radix, Sui, Aptos. They've, they've got that kind of tech that can make a layer one work without the need for all this complication and roll-ups and, and, and all that. What do you think, though? Does this make you more bearish or bullish on ETH? I personally was already slightly bearish, so this doesn't really help. And then lastly, don't ever let them tell you that privacy in crypto is bad. You had TD Bank, right? The DOJ, I believe it is. They're fining TD Bank $3 billion for essentially money laundering over the last like 30 years or something like that. Uh, a new biz dot secret makes a really good point, right? No sanctions list for TD Bank, no jail time, no shutdown of the bank itself. All of these things would be happening if this was done on crypto. And he points out even, it's likely that the reason this is allowed on the banks is because the banks make a profit. If they're getting fined 3 billion, then they probably made trillions in in profit if not at least multiple billions more than the fine that they're gonna actually incur right so it's a it's a double standard uh privacy is not a bad thing it's it, it it's all just comes back down to follow the money they need to be able to extract value from you and i normal retail users of banks because they're middlemen at the end of the day and that's one of the beautiful things about crypto. It's one of the things we're trying to do is eliminate the middlemen. If you're still here, I really do appreciate you watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more crypto news in the future. I'll see you on the next one.